Tony Cade Bambara, prolific African American author, activist, and more, writes, sister is a verb. Molly sisters everyone around her. It is one of the many reasons we adore and admire her. Another thing I learned very quickly about Molly is how important family is to her. Not only Ellen, Rich, and Clara, and her whole extended family, um, but also her own little family of four in Brooklyn, and that's Rice, Beans, and Nick in that order. <laughs> Rice and Beans are the cats. <laughs> the one thing we know that's been talked about this whole time is that from Nick, he's always acting with faith, and it comes from the heart. So even when he's a little harsh, it's constructive. <laughs> to paraphrase FDR, yeah, he's a curmudgeon, but he's our curmudgeon. As long as I can remember, Nick and Molly have always been a pair. Whenever I think of Nick, I think of Molly. And as our relationship with Nick began to grow, you know, Molly was there, and our relationship with Molly also blossoms. We literally just collectively refer to both of them as Nolly all the time. It's, it's, it's a rare occasion that we refer to them individually. They are like a pair in our brains. When I first met Molly and I was like a little tiny baby queer 14 year old and I like fell in love with her at first sight, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I couldn't imagine that I would be here today standing in five inch platform pink boots. You know? <laughs> like this like social and emotional growth to knowing that they were always going to be there for me as I was trying to figure out like how to be a human person in the world because like living is hard. Adulthood can be a really lonely place and for those of us who are lucky enough to be Molly's friend, she cuts through that with her presence and with her empathy. You've enriched my life in infinite ways. You've taught me so many things about strength and integrity, about being silly and being serious, about thinking and dreaming, about being a friend and about love. Am I to kiss you? It was beautiful. Oh, you look unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. It's perfect. Wow, guys. <laughs> she looks amazing. She looks, you're incredibly sexy. It's unbelievably sexy. Uh, we got a long evening ahead, right? How much time do we have? Let's uh, let's get married again. Yeah. You look, you look unbelievable. So you look ridiculous. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you're stunning. It's outrageous. Welcome everyone to Nick and Molly's wedding celebration. It is a great gift, a great joy to see everyone, Nick and Molly's family and closest friends gathered here today. I am outrageously honored to stand up here with them and with all of you. After our first date on February 4th, 2015, after five hours at a bar in the West Village, we split the bill followed by a long and meandering walk, which included our first kiss under the Washington Square Park Arch. I went home to my sister, Clara, to our 25th Street apartment, and I said, what the heck just happened to me? All right. It wasn't so much a query as a realization. I don't know if everyone knows this, but just two weeks later, I told Nick I loved him first. We don't have to go into details. <laughs> There's a New York City cab driver out there who has a really dramatic story. <laughs> but I just knew. It was insistent. It was impatient. It was sudden and it was beautiful. That's how you came into my life. <laughs> Appearing as you are. Beautiful, brilliant, as if someone who cared had placed you there for me to find. I vow to remember that when I met you, you were already perfect. At the same time, we aren't fully formed like the sunflower my grandfather planted. <laughs> we have lots of growing to do together. I vow to support you in your own flourishing. 
without which I cannot flourish. I vow to learn from and support you in your radical compassion and empathy for others, which must be the secret ingredient that made that sunflower grow so tall in one day. And I vow to say I love you and tell you you're beautiful at least twice a day. <laughs> you have been and always will be my partner, my great joy, and my impossible sunflower. I love you. I'm more confident in my work and my voice because of you. In you, my Nicholas, I found the ultimate teammate, partner, supporter, lover, and friend. You challenge me in all kinds of ways, and I love you for it. From you, I learned to argue, <laughs> to critically engage with every curiosity, and perhaps most importantly, you've taught me how to be a good partner. Because to be truly good to others, I have to really deeply respect myself. I'll always be your sunflower. I promise to always be in your corner. Be your best friend, your fiercest advocate. I love you and I'm so excited and honored to be your wife. I present to you all as husband and wife, Nick Rep and Molly Superfine. You may now kiss as partners in marriage for your community to behold. <laughs> Welcome to everybody. It's incredible to see everybody gathered here, to see all of you with your love and support for Molly and Nick. It's truly overwhelming. Nicholas, you've been basking in Molly's smiles for about eight years now. All I want for you is to have decades and decades and decades of more smiles from Molly. We'll be watching you with love, celebrating with you, and admiring you always. Cheers. I was at work and this was, I guess, eight years ago or so. I get a call from Nicholas and he says, Mom, I just met the most incredible girl. Her name is Molly Superfine. And she's super fine. And, and I still hear that and it is so true. Molly, you are incredible. You felt like family forever. And we all love you. Everything that we thought about this day, it's been the best version of it. It's unbelievable, you know? Some of that's luck, some of that's weather, and some of that's you guys. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. I'm so, so happy to be here with you all. And I, I really love this woman. The rest is just cake, you know? The rest is gravy, you know? Cheers, everyone. We love you guys. Let's hit the dance floor. Let's go. Come on.